more and more young women, girls, women, they're almost looking for validation yeah. of their trauma through a diagnosis. Yeah. There has been several pieces of research that show that at any one time, if you're distressed, you could be diagnosed with at least 14 psychiatric disorders because the criteria itself overlap so heavily across each disorder. And then on top of that, you have to look at things like confirmatory bias because you are com you are almost confirming what you think is is how you feel, and then you're seeing it on the screen and going, oh, "That's me. That's 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 how I feel. I'm." I, my moods go up and down. I struggle with sleeping. I don't trust people anymore. And then you're sort of going, that's, that describes me. You it's know? like how any horoscope you read can describe yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So the difference between horoscopes and like psychiatric diagnosis is that people have been led to believe that the psychiatric diagnosis, the criteria is based on science which it isn't, is based on subjective criteria and subjective description. You know, for example, there are no tests for borderline personality disorder. You can't have a blood test. You can't have a brain scan. You can't have a gene test. You can't have a urine test. All it is based on is you identifying with the criteria and then somebody else agreeing that that's how they think you behave and think and that's your diagnosis. So you could be distressed and you would fit the criteria for so many psychiatric disorders at once that it's kind of like a postcode lottery as to which one when you get given when you go and see the doctor because what we do know also is that like if that particular psychiatrist or psychologist specializes in like borderline personality disorder you're very likely that they will see you through that lens mm -hmm. but if you went and saw a second one that specializes in bipolar disorder they will see you through that lens and you you sort of get redefined and reframed as they see you. The other thing about validation and self-diagnosis is that if we live in a world where people's day-to-day -day distress on top of real serious traumas that are not being validated, they're not being addressed, they're being blamed for them, they're being shamed for them, they're being guilt-tripped for them. None of that's being looked at, none of that's being supported, but then there's this thing on Google that says, if you feel like X, Y, and Z, maybe you have this mental disorder, you can understand why so many people look at that and go, that's what it is all this time, and I didn't know that's what I had, rather than the messier answer, which is actually, you've been subjected to so many traumas that it is likely you'll think and feel and behave like this when when you talk about how these diagnoses are very much like how women were treated hundreds of years ago mm -hmm. as witches can you please reframe your perspective the way i would explain that somebody sat in front of me and says i've got anxiety disorder i've been told i have anxiety disorder i take this medication every day it's it's because i have a brain chemical imbalance the doctors told me that it's a disorder i tend to ask women when did you start feeling like this is there a thing was there an event was there a situation an environment and often at first women will sort of go oh I don't really remember you know I was like it, it, I think I've had it for years but if you dig enough and sort of say well do you remember when this didn't happen do you remember when you never felt like this before when was it easier you know when did it start to get worse for example and you'll often get eventually they'll say well you know there was like my husband cheated on me years ago and um, I've never been the same since. You're like, right, let's start from there. Okay, so your husband cheated on you. And then when what happened? Well, I started feeling worthless. I started thinking I was fat. I looked in the mirror and I just thought, God, I'm not good enough. I started, you know, being scared of relationships. I don't trust anybody. He told everybody that, I don't know, that I wasn't good in bed or that I didn't respect him. And then it, it made me think, God, is that what I'm really like? And then I started questioning myself. Then the self-doubt set in. And you can see actually how what looks like anxiety i.e. intense fear, being worried all the time, self-doubt, panic, you can see how that builds over a period of time. My approach to that would be to say, if we broke all of those things down and looked at each one and how those behaviours developed because of how you were made to feel or because of how something made you feel, they actually look very rational to me. They look logical. They look normal. They look exactly what I would expect you to feel like after something like this. And you think, like, look at all of these different distressing experiences. Why wouldn't you be worried right now? Why wouldn't you be not coping? Like, that's the way I would reframe it. Her hair is curly, her teeth are pearly. She's got an edge, but she's still pretty girly. Oh, oh, nothing rhymes with Dahlia.